May you all, dearly beloved, listening to the sound of my voice on Prophet Kanawu TV, be blessed. Pillar of Christ Jesus International is the platform and is headed by Prophet Kanawu in Paris, France. You could reach Prophet Kanawu on Zoom on Sundays, Thursdays and Fridays at 18.30 hours Greenwich Mean Time. You could reach Prophet Kanawu on Zoom on Sundays, Thursdays and Fridays at 18.30 hours Greenwich Mean Time. Thank you. Today's message is entitled Significance of the Temptation. Significance of, of the Temptation. And we could delve into the message from Luke 4, 1 to 13. Luke 4, 1 to 13. And I read. Look for 1 to 13. And Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness during 40 days, being tempted of the devil. And he did eat nothing in those days. And when they were completed, he hungered. And the devil said unto him, If thou art the Son of God, command this stone, that it become bread. And Jesus answered and said unto him, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone. And he led him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world, in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, To thee will I give all this authority and the glory of them, for it had been delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I will give it. If thou therefore would worship before me, it shall all be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, It is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou save. And he led him to Jerusalem, and set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou art the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee to guard thee, and on their hands they shall bear thee up, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus answered and said unto him, it is, it is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had completely completed every temptation, he departed from him for a season. Amen. Beloved, let us bow our heads in prayer. Father God, we thank you for your word that does not come to you void, but accomplishes its purpose. And as we delve into your word, we ask that, dear Lord, you give us understanding as of the day of Pentecost. And Lord, Give us the courage to preach your word to all the four corners of the earth so that souls may be won into your kingdom through your church, pillar of Christ Jesus International. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Son. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Sing. 
significance of the temptation. The devil comes to Jesus seeing his depleted condition and says to him, since you are really the son of God, command these stones to become bread. Jesus was perfectly aware of his divine nature. He knew that he could speak the word and end this hunger at once. But Jesus Christ quotes scripture back at him. Here it is written, not by bread only shall man live. And Matthew asks, but by every word of God, which makes things a little clearer. The children of Israel in the wilderness had not believed God's word and had complained for bread to fill their bellies. Instead, they should have trusted the Lord for food. The Lord knew his people are starving, although probably not the, to the extent his son was. They should have waited patiently for this provision rather than complain. According to Matthew and Luke, in the second and third temptation, Satan took Jesus Christ to a high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of earth in a moment of time. Satan says, I will give you authority over them and the glory of them. Then he asks, to me, they have been delivered, and to whoever I will, I will give it. All you have, all you have to do is worship me, and they shall be yours. When we look at this, we can see several lies. The big lie is that all the kingdoms of this world is not his to give. He is emphatic about this. For Psalm 24, verse 1 emphatically states, The earth is God's and the fullness thereof. Satan is trying to give to Jesus Christ what Christ, as the Son of God, already owns. Adam had been given dominion over the earth by God. When Adam sinned, he signed over his right to Satan. But Adam had a derived right of rule and not an absolute one. In the same way, Satan's rights are derived. We even see this in the beginning of Job when he has to ask God for permission to smite Job. What this temptation tried to do was to separate Christ's human nature from his divine nature and absolute right to rule. The third temptation was the most sneaky of all. Satan lays Jesus Christ to the pinnacle of the temple and tells him to throw himself down. He knows Jesus had quoted scripture in response to the first two temptations. So Satan quotes scripture, throw yourself down. And here, and here, Psalm 91 promised that God will guard you with his angels, lest you dash your foot against the stone. Many see this as the, as the temptation to live dangerously and carelessly. After all, if you are God's child, he will certainly protect you. Although we should not presume God's care as a pretext for stupidity, there is actually more here. By throwing himself down, observers will see Jesus descending from heaven. When he landed on the ground safely, observers will see that he was the Messiah. The problem is that the popular conception of the Messiah and his mission was not at all the Messiah that Jesus came 
to be. The idea to be the Messiah on the world's terms, rather than God's preluded suffering on the cross. They will see his kingship and kingdom in the way the world sees it. Jesus responds with, it is written, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. This is understandable in its normal sense. We should not tempt God like the children of Israel did in the wilderness. As Satan was actually trying to tempt God. After all, Jesus Christ is the God of the Old Testament in his divine nature as son of God. It could, in this sense, be read, stop tempting me, and the temptations ended. Look us, that the devil left until a more convenient time. We don't handle temptation any better than the children of Israel did in the wilderness. We complain and grumble for far too much. We are not educated in scripture enough, so we cannot throw it in Satan's face. All the fasting and mortification of our bodies fail to improve the deficit of faith. Perhaps we would be better saved at this time in keeping in memory that the captain of our salvation was made perfect through suffering. He made all the right choices on our behalf. He suffered in our place. He did not just relieve the history of Israel. He has relieved our lives as well. God sees us in the responses Jesus made to temptation rather than ours. Our only hope is that we are united to Christ by faith. By faith. Left to ourselves, we are most hopeless. Thinking of what Jesus has done for us and believing that he did these things for us is what should occupy our thoughts every day of our life. These thoughts will cleanse our lives and souls far more than our vows and rules. Finally, beloved, let us be thankful to the Most High God that Jesus Christ drank the cup of his wrath and went to the cross for our salvation. Amen. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Father God, we thank you for your word that is like a two a soul. And dear Lord, as we go our separate ways, we ask that your Holy Spirit help us to meditate these words, the significance of the temptation in our hearts. The Lord, we ask that you give us the courage to preach your word to all the four corners of the earth so that souls may be won into your kingdom through your church, pillar of Christ Jesus International. Father God, we thank you. We glorify your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen.